think from a very early age, I obviously realized that I was living in a home with two faiths. Um, so my mom's side of the family are Christians and my dad's side, my dad's side of the family are Muslims. Um, of course, growing up when that's all you know and that's what you're used to, it doesn't feel foreign, it doesn't feel alien to you. Um, for a long time when I was younger, I was literally practicing both religions. I went to a boarding school in Norfolk, outside of London, and I think it really <laughs> hit me when one time my dad came to pick me up, because you would go home like every three weeks, for example, and he came to pick me up and he literally was wearing like long white jalabia and a white hat. And of course, my school was pretty much, I was like one of the only black girls there. So, <laughs> so I think someone, I can't remember who it was, was like, why is your dad wearing a dress? <laughs> and at that moment I thought, hmm, that's a very good question because to me he wasn't wearing a dress, right? That's what he would normally wear on a Friday or if he wants to pray or if he just feels comfortable. But to them it was just so foreign to see this black man wear a long dress. And I think at that point I started to realize, hmm, maybe my home isn't as normal as I thought and of course my school was a Christian school so we used to go to I was even part of the choir for goodness sake um, at one point so at that period of my life let's say Christianity was probably the the religion that was in the focus for me just because my school was Christian and yeah it was just easy it was just the easy thing to do I would go to the mosque with my dad I would read Arabic we would recite prayers but then Christmas, New Year's, I would go to the church with my mom and it was just something that was just, it was very, very normal to me. So I don't know, it was, when, it, when I got to my late teens, I got to that space where I was like, okay, I really want to find out more about this religion or religions and find out what I actually believe. And if you wouldn't believe me, but I actually studied like Rastafarianism, Hinduism, Buddhism, atheism, like I don't ever think I could not believe in God, but even people that are agnostic, for example, they just don't know. There was a time that I thought I didn't believe in religion, but I believed in God. And that's just literally where, where the space I was in, I was really trying to find myself. And then I started to question, um, question religions a lot. So I literally went like, a, for like a year and a bit, I was just floating. Like, I'm not subscribing to any religion. I'm gonna find myself. And I don't think I really told anyone apart from my best friend at the time. So it's not something my family knew I was on this spiritual voyage, you know, to find myself. They didn't know, but I knew I was on it because I was studying a lot, reading a lot. And then when certain things didn't make sense, I was like, hey, maybe that religion's not for me or maybe that, you know, faith is not for me. And then funny enough, I did like a 360. And even though I was probably more of a Christian at a point in my life, I literally now became like more of a Muslim because when I, once I started to study the religion for myself and understand what it was and what it meant, it made more sense to me. Now, I'm not at all an ambassador for the faith. I'm not at all saying I'm a perfect Muslim. It couldn't probably be further from the truth. But what I am saying is that that was the religion that for me, I believed in. Um, and you can only go by what you believe and what you feel and what you feel God is telling you. And so at that point, I made up my mind and I was like, this is it. So what I feel like is that I went on a quest and I found what is my truth. And some people that have never been on a quest, for example, they're just living what they've been given. Now, by all means, I'm, you can be in a home where both of your parents are of the same faith. And that can, be, that can be your truth. But what you have to understand as well, some people are born into those environments and they never question or try and find themselves. So they're just doing things out of habit, not that they feel it. They go to church every Sunday or pray five times a day because that's what they've been taught to do. Not that they've gone to explore and see or, or you understand, or take it a bit further. So when people like that turn around and question you, that you've been on a journey, you that you've seen, you understand, you that are very open to, to the world and things, it's quite annoying. People are so used to the idea of them thinking I am what I am. So when they feel like, oh my God, I just I assumed you were a Christian. So when they realize I'm not, they just feel like, oh, but you need to come to my church. So I always say, no problem. I'll come to your church if you come to my mosque. Then you'll just get, oh no, I can't go to the mosque. Why? Why not? I mean, what happens there that I don't get it, that, that you don't, <laughs> I don't understand? Because trust me, up to today, 
I go to people's churches if you're doing a Thanksgiving, if you're doing a birthday, if you need some emotional support. I'm that friend. I will be at your church because I'm comfortable and confident in my faith and what I believe. I don't feel like if I go to a church, it's going to change my mind. So when I invite people to, okay, yeah, come to the mosque, my family are doing a function or, you know, you'll realize that no one turns up. Like, apart from, for example, my Yoruba people that kind of like understand the dynamics, that they understand, okay, they're used to it. People are kind of scared of things that they don't know. And what I want people to properly understand is that just because it's not normal to you doesn't mean it's not normal to somebody else. So rather than get defensive and ask people all these questions, just listen. Just listen to people and understand their vibe and, and don't ever feel like you're in a position where you know more than someone based on a choice you've made in life. So you're a Christian and I'm, I'm glad. Like I said, half of my family are Christians and I love them dearly and I understand Christianity. I studied it. I've went, been to all kinds of churches. But for you to then say, why are you a Muslim? When I don't ask you, why are you a Christian? I find a bit offensive. Now I know people don't mean to be offensive, so I, do not I don't take it personal at all. I just feel like people need to understand and respect people's choices and people's space. And if you have a question, there's a manner in which you will do it, which will be welcome, welcomed. And Someone will be happy to tell you, oh, this was my journey and I'll sit down and tell you all these things and all oh, things that I learned. But when you come at me like I owe you something, you're going to get a very blunt answer. And I'm probably going to say, why are you a Christian? And then you're going to get offended. And it's just unnecessary. Have there been challenges? Yes. Are there still challenges? Yes. And if I'm honest, the challenges don't come from my immediate environment. I mean, like I said, I'm not anything new in like my tribe, let's say. You're used to hearing or knowing Muslim families or Muslim girls that necessarily don't wear hijab or, you know, are not necessarily stereotypically look like a Muslim woman, whatever that means. Um, but then to the outside world, you will, you find that you have to, well, I don't obviously, but you find that people feel like you should have to explain your choice to them. I struggled with that. Because I'm so open to religion, I find when people come to me though, they're so closed. So. They're coming to me to preach, but they're not open. So I'm telling you, oh, cool, that sounds good. But I'm telling you like my side of my story or, you know, oh yeah, it's similar or I believe this as well. Or I actually believe in Jesus. Like I'll tell you, I believe in Jesus. And they'll be like, oh no, but I'm like, no, that means you haven't really come here to understand or listen to what I'm saying. Because some of the things you're saying is, oh, accept Jesus Christ. And I will tell you, I've already accepted him. And they'll say, oh no, you couldn't if you're a Muslim. I'm like, See, that's where you're getting the conversation wrong. You probably don't even know that Jesus is in the Quran, for example. You probably don't even know that. So how can you possibly come and preach to someone when you haven't even found out what the person's about? Like, and the reason why I know this is so key is because I will never forget, like my dad, he literally had a Jehovah Witness that used to come to our house every week. And they used to sit down in the kitchen and have conversations for hours. I mean, every week. And my dad's a Muslim and he would let this man into his house and they would sit down and they would talk about God and religion, a Jehovah Witness. That was my upbringing. 